Welcome to What's Up in Jeju, where I, JY Choi, visit places around the island and talk about what's happening with Hashtag Daily Case host, Peter Bint. So what's our theme for today? We got all danced out last week. Yeah, so today it's time for relaxation and really looking for the best summer getaways in Jeju-do. And I thought it would be interesting to talk about where locals go versus where tourists go for summer beach getaway days. Oh, is there like a big difference for that? There are certain places where it's more heavily populated by locals and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So the local resident call themselves Tomin or Jeju Tomin. So that means uh-huh. literally means islanders or the residents. And they tend to veer off of really crowded beaches that are popular to, of mm. course, visiting tourists. Because that's what Jeju is known for, the pristine coastline and beautiful beaches. So we know it's beautiful, but... As a local, we tend to stay a little away from that kind of places. Yeah, I guess it's the same even in Seoul and when I was living in London. You'd want to avoid the tourist traps, Mm -hmm. as we'd call them, you know, where it's really commercial, really crowded. So I can understand that. But I'm wondering if you're going to upset a few locals today, JY, revealing (gasps) the hotspots where (laughs) they go, the secret hidden places. Oh, I don't think I know as well as the real residents here because (laughs) it's my year too. And last year, I didn't know any of the hidden spots. And this year, I was let on in a couple of spots, but still those are, you can easily search them online. So I'm still quite green in terms of being a real Jeju resident. I don't know whether you're Mm. lying to us to protect like the code of the Jejuites. Mm. You're a very good actress, (laughs) JY. Uh, You know, I've been to Jeju maybe... Almost 10 times, if not 10 times. Mm. And I love it down there. But I can't say I've spent any holiday there as a beach holiday. Whenever I go to the East Coast in the summer here on the mainland, it's a beach holiday. Like, we're on the beach most of the time. Yeah. But whenever I've been to Jeju, it's, like, been a lot of time in the resort, maybe, like, doing some sightseeing on the island, and a little bit of the beach. Mm -hmm. So I'm really curious for today, because when I went to Sogwipo... And they've got a lot of hotels on like the cliffs there, which are quite high up. To get down to the beach, it's quite a lot of stairs. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of didn't like that. And the beach wasn't that wide. It was quite steep in terms of the water getting deep as well. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really love the beaches down there, I've got to be honest. Yeah, so there's a difference between Hebeon and Hesuyokjang. And Jeju is surrounded Mm -hmm. by all these Hebeons, uh, very famous Hebeons such as Sehwa. Uh, It's really beautiful up on the north east side but those are not designated swimming beaches so maybe it's hard to access those kind of places uh, down in south where you stayed Mm. because those are not designated places for swimming officially Uh, a lot of people go to swim of course but it is not official swimming area yeah we did the hashtag recently, Hesuyokjang, and mm-hmm. that's the perfect way to describe it, right? A designated beach mm-hmm. where you've got the lifeguards and you're meant to go swimming. So we've got an image of, I think, are these all the designated beaches in Jeju? So actually, this map is a little deceiving. I typed in Hesuyokjang, uh-huh. the designated beach, on a map yeah. app, and it showed all of it, but plus one or two non-designated beaches. So it's slightly misleading, oh. but still it, it has all the 12 designated beaches around Jeju Island. So when you look so at the map... So there are 12 yeah, in total. in total. And so okay. the red dot on the southwest, that's where I live. Mm. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's really out there, quite far from Jeju City. How long does it take you to get to Arirang? Uh, about an hour. And I enjoy the ride, you oh, know, wow. I listen to you, so it's fine. I really Thank look you. forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> So (laughs) the studio is located uh, near Jeju International Airport there. Uh, We are about 10 Mm -hmm. minute drive from the airport without the traffic. So up there, there's Hiwoteu Hesuyokjang. That is one of very famous beaches around the island. But you'll see, you know, along the coast, there are the major spots to go. And up in the Jeju Uh. city, so the northern part of the city, there are eight And then down in south, there are four designated beaches. Ah, I see. Mm -hmm. Wow. So there's way more on the northern side of the island than the southern side. Yeah. And actually, after living in Jeju, I finally understand because I've been down in Seogip for for the past two weeks and it's been just rainy and I didn't get a single beach day. And then I drive up north and and it's sunny and it's a perfect beach day, like a day 
like today, I would love to go anywhere. So that's the tip wow. that you should know where to be depending on the season. So I was talking to the okay. Arirang Kamdongnim here, the engineer, and he said you should yeah. check the traffic CCTV to know exactly where uh-huh. to be if you want a summer getaway uh, during certain rainy season because the CCTVs around the island will tell you exactly where to go. Ah, as in terms of the weather and maybe how crowded it is yeah, and because, stuff like that. Yeah, because the weather report really does a disservice to the very uh, subtle <sighs> Jeju weather that changes by the hour. So it'll say it's sunny, <sighs> but then when you get there, it's pretty cr- cloudy and even rainy. So you have to check the weather okay. on the weather report, but also check the CCTV as well. So, JY, for our first video that we'll play before a song break, we're mm-hmm. going to maybe the most famous beach on Jeju. Is this the one that they sometimes describe as like the Maldives of Korea? Yeah, absolutely. And it's called Hyopje Beach. And this is the first ever designated uh-huh. beach to open in Jeju back in the 1950s. <gasps> wow. All right, let's mm-hmm. check out your video here. Mm-hmm. Oh, it looks nice and shallow. Like you see people standing quite. What brought you to Hyopje today? Um, We just wanted to enjoy the beach today uh, while it was still good weather. Um, My aunt lives here, and so we were just spending a month out in Korea, and Jeju is one of the places we wanted to visit. What did you know about Hyopje Beach before coming here? Um, I just looked online and looked at the most uh, Googled places. (laughs) So Hyopje and Gangnam Beach were two of the top. So we wanted to visit, and it was close by. Which country are you from? Ah, uh, Zimbabwe. Wow, wow, Zimbabwe, all the way from there. And can I get your names? Uh, my name is Kea. My name is Gloria. Why did you come out to Hyopje with your ch- child today? Uh, we come to have fun because this is a very nice place to be. Yeah. I see. Do you have any other favorite beaches or water um, places anywhere in Jeju? Uh, I think here, yeah, uh, Kopje Beach uh, is the best for now. 제주 도민이세요? 네, 제주 산지 이제 한 8년 정도 됐어요. 그러면 도민으로서 물놀이 할때 보통 어디로 가세요? 어, 일단 젖은 상태로 이동해야 되니까 가까운 데로 많이 가고요. 협재보다는 저희 집에서 곽지가 가까운데 곽지에 사람이 더 적기도 해서 거기서 주로 물놀이를 하고 있어요. 뭐 해수욕장이 아닌 다른 곳으로도 좀 가세요? 네, 해수욕장은 사실 모래가 조금 그 나중에 씻거나 할때 번거로워서 모래가 없는 폭우 같은 데 가서 물놀이 많이 해요. Wow, look at you interviewing so many people for us, JY. Thank you so much. Yeah, I A enjoyed it. translation of what that that last interviewee said, mm-hmm. JY, so, would be helpful. Yeah, actually the last interviewee was not there to have fun. She was just walking by, had something to buy around that area. But she's a resident uh-huh. who's been living here for eight years. And she said uh, she goes to the beach that is close to her house. And also going to the beach comes kind of annoying sometimes because you get sandy. <laughs> so she sure. goes out to the ports and it's called Pogu in uh-huh. Korean. And Pogu is a very popular just water fun destination for locals. It has been that way for a long time. We've got some photos to show as well, because on the day you went to do the filming for the interview, it looked a bit overcast, right? Yeah, so we've been having just this cloudy, rainy weather, and then it cleared up, but the Mm. sun didn't come out. So I wanted to share some of the photos, what it looks like when it's sunny and beautiful out. (gasps) Oh. This is amazing. Mm. It does look like the Maldives. I went there for my honeymoon and it's just like this, like white sand, Mm -hmm. blue ocean. Yeah. Uh, That's unbelievable. Although I must say, JY, I've not been, I think, to Yopje Beach as far as I'm aware, but it looked quite crowded. So in the summertime, that's like one of the touristy places. Yeah. Parking is madness. I couldn't find the parking. So I had to park and take a bus (laughs) up to Yopje because I gave up after (gasps) giving it a try for 20 minutes. Oh, wow. And so that's, you know, that's the trade off. If you want to enjoy this beautiful beach, but if you want to find parking, <laughs> uh, it might be impossible. I wonder if the uh, Zimbabwean visitors had to park in Zimbabwe <laughs> to get a plane to yeah, so, Beach. <laughs> yeah, so the interviewee's backstory, he, they're actually living in Jeju Island because he's a horse rider. Wow. Isn't that interesting? What? Yeah, he's a oh, horseback like, rider. Oh, for the mm-hmm. for the horse racing track down yeah. there. Yeah. So I thought that was amazing, and That's they loved. Yeah, being out in Hyopje, and you see that tiny little island. So that's a manned island called Piangdo or Piangdo Island. 
oh, in the photo of Yeonja mm-hmm. Beach, that's a manned island. Yeah, oh, wow. and you can take ferry. Um, I think there are a couple of shuttle ferries every day if the weather is nice. The beach area, like mm-hmm. the depth of the sand is not that deep. Like mm-hmm. it seems the road is there and then you've maybe got, I don't know, 20 meters in some cases, maybe a bit more in others, but it's not a huge expanse of sand. Yeah, so this is very popular among families. It's uh, very family friendly because of the depth of the water, like you said. And this is one of the designated mm. beaches. So safe with all the lifeguards um, keeping you safe and yeah. all the uh, showers and facilities to use. That's another point of Haesuyokjungs, right? They will have all the facilities you need to clean off all that sand, which, to be honest, I don't mind. But my kids, when it gets in their toes, Mm -hmm. they get really arsy and annoyed. And I'm like, you've been on the beach. That's part (laughs) of the deal. But they want it all washed off. And so those Haesuyokjungs will have the taps and the showers and things like that. So in part two, we're going to get on to the Mm pogo, which was mentioned in the interview. Yes, so the Pogos are the ports or mini harbors across the island and the, around the coast. And these have been the favorite destinations of the locals. But after the emergence of social media, these spots have been mm. revealed. And so nowadays, I think the <laughs> ratio is about like 60 to 70 percent tourist and maybe 20 yeah. to 30 percent locals. That's amazing. So we've got your second video. It's mm-hmm. of Pampo Port. Mm-hmm. Here it is. Oh, look at all the fish. Yeah. Really nice to circle there. Wow, you could just put your net in there and catch them all. (laughs) You see the little... Oh, I see. So it's got like the net in there Mm -hmm. to designate where you can swim until. Yeah, and those are all lifeguards there too. Can I get your name, please? Uh, My name is Noms. And where are you from? I'm from South Africa. Wow, and you live in Jeju? Yes, I do. I live in Jeju. All right, and uh, what, where is your favorite uh, just beach or any place to go to swim? Um, so far, I think it's Gimyang. Gimyang, so it's my first time here today. So, but Gimyang has been my favorite so far. Mm. And what do you think about Panpo? Uh, it's a lot of fun. The water's cold, but it's fun. I really, I really like it. I like the space. It's a lot bigger and there's a lot more area to swim, which is nice. Wow, yeah. Mm-hmm. So that looks like just a huge natural swimming pool almost. Yeah, and so uh, people of all ages come here to swim or paddle boat or snorkel and dive too. That is so cool. I've never been anywhere like that. Maybe even in the UK, like you're always on a beach with maybe sand or pebbles, but that's so like clean, like you're not going to get dirty. Yeah, exactly. Seems. So like that last interviewee uh, from Hyopje Beach said, you're not, you don't have to deal with sand after this. Oh, that is pretty cool. And so mm-hmm. I'm definitely going to visit that Panpo Port mm-hmm. with a P at the beginning if you're spelling it in English. Uh, we've also got uh, another local favorite which isn't full of sand as well. We've got an image of this one, JY. Mm-hmm. So this is called Jeongmoshi Shimto. And actually, I was looking to visit here last weekend, but because it was too rainy and foggy, this place mm. is known for icy cold water. And no one was going to come out during the muggy wa- weather. Um, so I had to grab this photo <laughs> wow. from the, the Jeju Tourism Organization website. But It this, looks beautiful. It looks mm-hmm. like a big like mountain stream, like a keigok, mm-hmm. as we might call yeah, it Yeah, so Korean. it's sort of the keigok. It's the top of a waterfall uh, called the Jeongbang <gasps> Pukpo. Wow, that's really mm-hmm. famous. Isn't that the one that falls into the sea, yes. like at the coast somewhere? That's it. That's it on the southern coast in the Togipo area. Oh, wow. So this is the top part before the water falls off. Mm-hmm. And I haven't really uh, had a chance to visit here, but apparently the water is ice cold, way colder than even the ocean. <laughs> so this is where the locals go. And they just have their tochari. Really cool yeah, tochari, the mats around. And it's very shallow. The water come up to adults knee height so it's quite nice for family with little children to go but also for anyone to cool off during the summer yeah you really need to pick the right day to go to a keigok because yeah even in seoul the mountain streams are where you get the cool water because it's from the top of the mountain running in the shade on the cool rocks and stuff she, the South African visitor, was saying the sea was cold. Mm-hmm. I'm guessing the mountain streams are m- way colder. Yeah. So if it's not a hot day, 
you really maybe don't want to go in <laughs> there so much. What else are we going to talk about then in part three, JY? So I wanted to uh, show you this interview with the lifeguard and talk about some safety concerns when you are swimming at the non-designated mm. spots. So if we can go to the <sighs> video, we'll uh, look into some of the safety concerns in the Pogu part and also talk about some dangers okay. that you really have to be careful when you're swimming in the beaches in Jeju. 지금 보니까 구조 요원이 굉장히 많은데 어떤 좀 안전 주의 사항을 좀 생각하고 수영을 해야 될까요? 아, 어, 만조 시에는 생각보다 수심이 높아 가지고 그냥 간조 만조를 헷갈려서 생각보다 그냥 들어갔을 때 이렇게 높을 줄 몰랐는데 이렇게 깊을 줄 몰랐는데 하다가 허적되다가 사고가 많이 나오기도 해요. 그리고 여기 다이빙 주의 문구가 많은데 어, 어떨 때 다이빙을 하면 좀 위험할까요? 야, 간조 때 여기 팜프 포구는 수심이 진짜 왔다 갔다가 되게 갭이 큰데 그거에서 이제 간조 오실 때 썰물일 때 이제 다이빙은 통제하고 있어요. 아, 네, 감사합니다. 네. 음. Wow, he looks like he's got good legs for swimming. <웃음> oh there. yeah. Big muscular ones. <웃음> so, so when I went to Panpo, I was surprised by how many lifeguards were there around. So I believe the local mm. village youth association runs the safety system where they will have certain number of lifeguards on duty. But not all places have that if it's non-designated swimming spots. So you have to make sure uh-huh. to check uh, the high tide and low tide yourself if you are going to take the risk of swimming at a spot that is non-designated. What's Up in Jeju is supported by JDC, which is creating a free international city that resembles nature, embraces the future, and reaches the world. I'm JY Choi with writer No Hee Jung. This is Arirang Radio.